The 2021 NFL Draft has come and gone, and the Bengals have added 10 draft picks to their roster. We're going to break them all down later this week on Cincinnati Bengals Talk, but our very own Elise Jesse from AllBengals.com got to catch up with former Bengals offensive line coach Paul Alexander, who talked extensively about his work with Jackson Carmen, who... Let's admit it, is the controversial pick. It's the one we're all wondering about, right? Especially on Friday night. So without further ado, here's Elise Jesse with Paul Alexander discussing Jackson Carmen. Okay, Paul Alexander, you have um, nearly four decades of experience in this field. What you do, working with offensive linemen, developing offensive linemen, pro college level. Um, you were responsible for the great Andrew Whitworth, also responsible for Kevin Zeitler. Um, and the Bengals recently drafted Jackson Carmen, and I know that you worked closely with him. Um, why was he such a good player in your eyes? Uh, well, I saw Jackson. Shoot, I've been watching him for a couple of years, you know, and uh, uh, I've kept my eye on him. And he's such a great athlete. You know, he's a five-star guy out of uh, uh, Fairfield High School. You know, he was a top-rated offensive lineman in the country. Uh, so talented, so powerful, uh, great balance. Um, and all those things were great. And the thing that I got to know about him really well is this year they had a bye in October and uh, he came home and I know the coaches are at Fairfield and I got with him and we did some football and uh, I wanted to get to know him a little bit. And the thing that's amazing is out of all the players in the draft. Now I worked with 25 of these guys who will be drafted. I worked with, it was crazy how many guys I got of all those guys. There is not a single guy that knows the league better than Jackson Carmen. Now, why is that important? Well, we'd be watching film. And uh, and he knows, oh, yeah, that's T.J. White. You got to do this or you got to do that. Or, oh, he plays left tackle for him. And 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 we're I'm trying to break down all these players and I can't believe how much he knows. You know, he he instinctively knows by seeing, but he also models himself that way, okay. which is really important. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys come in the league and they don't know anything because they had all their emphasis uh you know, in their college life, uh, this kid was always looking forward. And uh, so he's a driven guy who, who's, who I think has the right makeup and obviously has a physical ability. He's going to be a terrific player. I, I really, really like this guy. Okay, that, that makes me feel pretty good about this pick for the Bengals. Does that, you, you mentioned just how much he knows about the league and he's used to modeling his game after others that he admires in the game. How much of an advantage does that give him coming into the NFL as a rookie? It's huge because he, uh, you block everyone different. You know, everyone has different rush moves and styles and speeds and strength and uh, agility and so forth. So you need a little different game plan against every guy you go against. Well, here's a guy who already knows a lot of those guys. And uh, so he's going to get a jump that way. Uh, the downside because I believe he's starting out at right guard. And, uh, you know, he's mostly been studying defensive ends, tackles. So, you know, he'll, he'll catch up. But he has that knack, that ability. How how much work goes into, um, for, a, for a player, goes into, you know, learning the guard position and making that transfer from a tackle position to a guard? Uh, he'll have a little work to do, but uh, the good thing about him is he has like the ideal body frame to play either guard or tackle. A lot of tackles are really high cut and they can't bend as well, you know, to play inside a guard, which you need more leverage at guard. Uh, you know, he has a good low center of gravity. He's got good legs on him and strength. And, and uh, so he has the physical attributes to play guard uh, and tackle. You know, he's, one of, he's in the sweet spot, really. The physical part will be pretty quick. You know, the assignments will be a little bit different, you know, making a lot more calls. You probably have, uh, oh, triple the number of calls at guard that you would have at tackle and different possibilities of things that can happen. And uh, so he'll have to learn that and learn how to uh, uh, get into that whole rhythm of communication and execution and so forth. How important is it, in your opinion, 
for the starting five to not only know the calls and um, also the players that they're going against, obviously, but, you know, what the tendencies are of the guys who are next to them on that line? Uh, well, you only get that through repetition. You know, you, you, you get, you get hundreds of reps. of the guy next to you and, and, uh, that's, that only comes with time. It only comes with practice and game, uh, reps. And, um, so he's, uh, uh, good news is if he's playing right guard, then, you know, Riley Reef's been around the league a long time, you know, and, and uh, Trey is a really smart center. And uh, so he'll be next to two guys who've got a lot of skins on their belt. And uh, so I think he'll do great. And um, I read and also heard that you personally recommended um, Carmen to the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, I'm assuming you talked to Duke Tobin. And I know that you're close with Mike Brown. Um, what were those conversations like? I talked to him. And when, when I talked to Mike, you know, I, I, I said, hey, Mike, here's the 25 guys that uh, I worked with for the draft. And uh, uh, who do you want to talk about? And the first guy he mentioned was, tell me about Jackson Carmen. Okay. And that was like, wow, that's kind of, uh, you know, I thought they'd want to know first about Penny Sewell and go down the line, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh he wanted to talk about Jackson, and obviously I gave him a strong endorsement, and uh, I think he's going to be terrific. Yeah. Did Mike perhaps mention why he zeroed in on Jackson so early? No, Mike is a great poker player. You never, Mike never <laughs> goes in, ever. It, uh, no, he just asks questions, and uh, he wants to get you talking, and uh, he didn't. He did, but obviously, you know, uh, they see they see the stuff, they see the skills. I don't know why the mock drafters had him lower than that. If anything, I thought he was a, I thought he was more of a first round pick than a third round pick. You know what people were saying. So I think a lot of the evaluations this year, because of the COVID precautions and restrictions, were uh, uh, a little bit off this year. Well, in your opinion, what what are some of the major differences or attributes that a first round pick as far as offensive tackles or guards goes is compared to a third rounder? Well, you know, we have definitions. If a guy's a first round pick, right, if he's all first round picks need to be uh, immediate starters on their team. All right. And you have to project a first round pick to at least be an average NFL starter. All right. Now, the higher the pick, then the better the player. You know what I mean? And the lower the pick, it should be an average NFL starter. That's a first round pick. Is he that? There's no question he is. He's going to he's going to start right away and he's going to be in his career, at least an average NFL starter at his position, maybe better. And uh so that's why I see him more as a first round. A third round pick, by de definition, is earlier in, early in his career. He's a uh, uh, in the mix player. You know, he plays when someone's hurt, or he can kind of, you know, he has a special role, or you know, that's the definition of a third round pick. Is he that? No, he's not that at all. So that's why I see him closer to one than three. Okay, I like that, and. I remember when I spent the day with you, you were so gracious to allow me to follow you around <laughs> all day in your meetings. Um, but one thing I remember from that time, that day with you, was when you said that you don't really get along with people who are not hard workers and people who are not driven um, and competitive. So I is it safe to say that Jackson Carmen is all three of those things? Oh, he is. Yeah. It, in fact, the, probably the the story that I mentioned about how he knows the league and pro football and players better than any guy in the entire draft. Well, you have to be a motivated guy to be that. Um, obviously, you just don't naturally acquire those things, you know, through you don't pull through McDonald's and they give it to you. And uh, so, no, I think he's uh, he has all that and he's a hard worker and Oh no, he, he's a, he's a he's he ranks high on all those categories. In fact, I know that uh, uh, on draft day yesterday, uh, Duke had called Willie Anderson because Willie knew him from high school too, you know, and uh, uh, and 
he asked Willie about those traits. And I I know that Willie gave him a full endorsement on that as well. What advice do you give to players like Jackson Carmen who are entering one of the toughest divisions in the NFL, the AFC North going against the Steelers twice a year, the Browns, the Ravens twice a year, when you're facing defenses at that caliber, what's the biggest advice that you give to them going in? Well, I think, I think they're, they're, there's 32 good teams, you know, they're, they're all good, you know, and um, I don't know the, the best advice I, I told Jackson this, I said, this is a great thing. The best thing you can do is make Cincinnati your continued home. You know, I used to tell that to all the players we would draft, I would say, make Cincinnati your new home, but he's from Cincinnati, you know, and I said, the best way uh, to have a great life is to uh, this be your place. You get involved in the community. You know, you're, you're able to uh, do things to help promote the game, which eventually helps promote you. And, and uh, so I, I recommend it. I told him this yesterday. I said, the number one thing you can do is, you know, don't worry about getting some condo in Las Vegas or whatever you're thinking. You know what I mean? Just, just, throw yourself right into football here and throw yourself into Cincinnati. You've been away for four years, but, but uh, you're back home now. And, uh, and when football's done, uh, you'll, you'll be happy you did that.